Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Book of Genesis, part of the Christ Honor and Commentary series by my pastor, Brother James W. Knox, and he's the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Deland, Florida. And this is the cover of the old book. This is a devotional type of book, the only one that he's ever done in this uh, style of commentary. And when the book gets re-released, it's going to be more of a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse commentary. And uh, I was talking to one of the uh, men that uh, are uh, from the church, um, Brother in Christ from the church, that is uh, proofreading this book. And, um, and there's another one uh, proofreading it also. So it's going to, he says, it's going to be uh, full of rich information and, and good truth from the book of Genesis. So looking forward to uh, seeing that when it comes out. And uh, if you want to get a copy of this particular uh, book, I'm sure you can find it somewhere on the internet or perhaps contact the church to find out how to get a maybe a e-file copy sent here or something so you can have these um, devotional type ones. I'm not sure if he's going to put these in with the um, new commentary, but um, if you can find this, uh, it's a good book to have part of the Christ Honor Commentary series that he's been uh, doing. So, amen. And I'll give you the information at the end of the broadcast on how to get that book and uh, many of the others uh, that he has written. So, today's topic is titled... Thoughts on Sacrifice for this 8th day of April. But before we get into all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he's the only one that can save your soul. So you need to admit you're a sinner. You need to turn from what you're trusting in. That's what repenting is, turning from what you're trusting in and turn to Christ and trust him as your Lord and Savior and realize you're a sinner and that you're lost and dead and trespasses a sin on your way to devil's hell without Christ and um, don't reject him any longer but trust him as your savior and he will gladly save your soul and wash away all your sin and give you eternal life and then after that the Holy Spirit comes immediately to dwell inside of you and then he'll teach you and guide you in all truth as you desire to live for him and hope you're not just getting saved from uh, not going to hellfire, but of course that's why most of us get saved at the beginning, but then we realize that it's not about us, it's about Him and serving the Lord and going to good Bible-believing church and, and growing in the Word of the Lord and learning to be Christ-like and not to give into the flesh every single day, every single second, and uh, all that stuff, and to have victory and and to have a good, solid relationship with the Lord. So while we're on this earth, and to be bold witnesses for Him after you get saved, so, amen. All right, so let's go ahead and get into today's topic for April 8th, titled Thoughts on Sacrifice. So Brother James writes here and says, First, the sacrifice is not being offered in order to purchase or acquire something at the hand of God. It is given in response to a promise made by the Lord. Sacrifice is the response of the heart to the grace of God never a bargaining chip with which to obtain grace, right? So once you learn that, <clears throat> all right, so continuing on, he writes, Abraham is acting to fulfill the requirements connected with the uh, solemnities of a covenant, took, divided, match Leviticus 1.6. Having divided the animals, he placed the corresponding pieces opposite to each other, and the one bird opposite to the other, leaving a passage between. This was the usual form of agreement and contract. The two parties would walk in procession along the pathway thus made, and thereby signifying their agreement. And that uh, reference is Jeremiah 34, 18 FF. I believe that means um, continuing on in the chapter forward. And then continuing on, Brother James writes here and continues on on this topic. He says, the underlying idea is that of a covenant by means of sacrifice. And that reference is Psalm, Psalms 1-5. The blood covenant was a well-known primitive method of ratifying solemn agreements. He says, it is noteworthy that only God passed through the pieces and not Abraham as well, right? So only God passed through the pieces not, and not Abraham as well. Uh, this clearly shows that a divine covenant is not a mutual agreement on equal t uh, terms, but between two parties 
but a divine promise assured and ratified by means of a visible pledge of its fulfillment. This at once takes the divine covenant out of the category of all similar human agreements. It is divinely one-sided. God promises, God gives, God assures, and that reference is Hebrews 4.17. Man's part in this covenant is simply that of a recipient. God gives, Abraham takes. Look at the grand words of Psalms uh, 116 verses 12 to 13. What shall I render unto the Lord? I will take. So that's the question, what shall I render unto the Lord? And then the answer is, I will take. The attitude of the believer in response to this covenant of grace is fourfold. And here's the fourfold, uh, four points here. Number one, a feeling of deep gratitude. Two, a response of wholehearted trust. Three, an expression of hearty thanksgiving. And four, a life of loyal obedience. So let me give that fourfold thing here again. The attitude of the believer in response to this covenant of grace is fourfold. Number one, again, is a feeling of deep gratitude. Two, a response of wholehearted trust. Three, an expression of hearty thanksgiving. And four, a life of, to of loyal of obedience. So if you'd like to take notes, that's the four things there. And that will conclude our topic on thoughts on sacrifice. And tomorrow's topic for the ninth is titled The Long View. And so I hope that you got something out of that today from this little topic here on this eighth day of April. And again, this is the cover of the book here. So I'm sure you can find it somewhere on the Internet if you don't have a copy yourself or contact the church. And that uh, website is www dot jameswnox.org where you can go straight to the store part of the website if you want to uh, look at his books and get any of the books that he has available and that's store dot jameswnox.org and uh, so that's that and then um, if you want to watch the video presentations of the sermons that he's done over the years including the newer ones uh, that he's been going through the pastoral epistles and uh, yesterday's was uh, both of them were really good and convicting so uh, check those out, and that's James Knox Sermon's YouTube channel. That's the Bible Baptist Church YouTube channel um, to watch uh, the videos. Um, if you, whether you want to listen to audio or video, um, you can get both on the church website, or you can go straight to the video version of the sermon and watch it on uh, YouTube channel. And then the broadcast that I do, that's a separate broadcast from this one. This one including the other one, which is the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast. That's available either to watch on Facebook, if you're friends with me on Facebook. Or if you don't have Facebook or know somebody that doesn't have Facebook, you can try, uh, direct them to the YouTube channel. And that's Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting. Or uh, look at me up by typing the name Baptist Broadcast and look me up that way. And like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I'm posting these up on the YouTube channel. And uh, so I hope that these uh, broadcasts are helping the blessing and edifying to you. And encourage you to keep going and serving the Lord and getting into God's word and studying it to show thyself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And going to God in prayer and seeking his face and asking him to um, help you grow and learn from his word and to have a um, good relationship with him and uh, to show him that we love him more by being obedient so amen and then that's the bible here the king james bible the word of god that's the book we should always be getting into there and again studying it and reading it and all that stuff and getting into a good bible believing church to hear god's word uh, preached and live it out not just be a sunday christian but to live um, christ-like every day of the week and have a good relationship with the lord every single day so Amen. All right, well, that'll be about it for today. So thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you. Until next time, bye-bye for now.